Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. In today's video, I'll be talking about all the books that I finished uh, in the month of July. So July, as far as reading month goes, I think it is an absolutely incredible reading month. I've been waiting to find a reading month as good as this again, and I finally got it in the month of July. Whether it's in terms of quality or quantity, both of them are wonderful to me. I finished six novels. They are quite big and I did not expect to actually finish uh, reading six novels in the month of July because as some of you might know already, I did went to Bali for a few days to meet Ryan Cahill and also, well, just to have a bit of a vacation. And because of that, I thought I, would, I wouldn't be able to actually finish reading six books, but I did it. And yeah, all of them are great, really good. And I actually also found two five stars books in the month of July, which is, again, as some of you might know already, but if you don't know, uh, this year, have been a bit scarce of five stars books for me and this will be the fifth and the sixth of five stars books and i will start by talking about uh, the first book that i finished last month which is of course uh you me and the nightmare painter by brandon sanderson and this is the fifth five stars books of the year for me absolutely love you me and the nightmare painter i think this is the best of the secret project so far i already did a full spoiler review of this book on my youtube channel so i will not try to well lengthen this video unnecessarily but i love this one very much i think this is the best stand uh, standalone novel that sanderson has ever crafted and that's quite a surprise because this is uh, well, it can be categorized as a romance novel, not romanticy, it's different, okay? But yeah, uh, this is a romance novel and I loved it. This definitely inspired by Final Fantasy X, Kimi no Nawa or Your Name, and also Hikaru no Go, the manga, Hikaru no Go by Yumi Hota. And these three are things that I love. And to have all of them appearing in a form in Cosmere novel, that means a great deal to me. And every page of this one, was incredible to me and loved it, loved it. And the artwork by Ali Chen. There is simply no way I'm talking about Yumi and the Nightmare Painter without mentioning the illustrations by Ali Chen because her illustrations definitely enhance the quality of the book for me. Uh, this is the end paper. See, it's pretty, right? And yeah, I actually just got my copy of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, the Dragon Seal Edition. And also some of you might have seen uh, this on Twitter or maybe Instagram, but lately, uh, Thor Books and Golangs just revealed the cover art to their edition of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter uh, with the cover art done by Tran Nguyen and that one somehow turned out even better than the cover art to this in my opinion but the inside this one definitely excels I mean this is the first interior artwork and then I'm going to show one more uh, hold on uh, this one Ta-da! It's beautiful, right? Super beautiful. I love Ali Chen's illustration. As for the rest, I think you will just have to read it and find out for yourself. Okay? And yeah, this received a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me. Love this one very much. The best uh, standalone novel by Brandon Sanderson. The best of The Secret Project so far. And the second novel that I finished last month, it was Waybound by Will White. This is the 12th and the final volume in the Cradle series. And I think I consider Waybound to be my second favorite book in the entire series. Now, if you're uh, entering Waybound expecting that every single thing in the story in the series will be resolved, then you might be disappointed because when I finished uh, Dread God, the 11th book in the series, which is the penultimate volume, I already knew that this one will not be able to solve every single thing in the Cradle series. It's impossible. But Will White succeeded at finishing the main mission that was introduced and began in Unsold. And I think that's the most important one. Maybe Will White is preparing for the rest that were unresolved to be, maybe, I don't know, written in a sequel series. Who knows? It just might happen. I have no idea whether Will White has confirmed this or not, but based on how it ends, it definitely, it's definitely possible. But as far as Waybound goes, this is the most action-packed uh, novel of the entire series. And we're talking about very large-scale battles in Cradle epic and over-the-top battles like as you can probably expect in Dragon Ball Z or many anime shonen anime fights massive and devastating explosions massive enemies and an anime style display of power really anime style I cannot emphasize this highly enough but if you have been reading Cradle from the beginning I think you might have noticed that this has always been like a novel version of a manga or an anime anyway but yeah I 
love Weibang. I think it is a great book. If you do not like reading battle scenes, heavy battle scenes, I think the battle scenes in this book cover about 50% of Weibang, and this is the biggest book in the entire series. And if you do not like reading detailed battle scenes, then this might be a bit of a problem uh, for you. But for me, this one works really well. But I mean, how could it not be? I've been reading 12 books in the cradle, and I felt emotional saying goodbye to these characters. Of course, I have a form of attachment to these characters, and yeah, saying goodbye to them will feel bittersweet, but thank you so much to Will White for writing Cradle. I've been reading this series for three and a half years now, and now the journey is over. I look forward to reading whatever Will White, uh, Will White write next, maybe the captain, or maybe something else. We'll see. But for Waybound, I give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars rating. It is incredible, though it is not as good as Reaper, in my opinion, the 10th book in the series. And the next novel that I finished after Waybound, it was Blood Over Bright Haven by M. L. Wong. So this is the newest standalone novel by M. L. Wang. Yes, this is an adult fantasy, a dark academia fantasy novel. It is inspired by a Full Metal Alchemist, and also I think it is truly uh, amazing that M. L. Wang managed to craft another utterly brilliant uh, standalone novel. It is amazing. I think no one writes stand standalone fantasy novel as good as M. L. Wang. That's my honest opinion. The Sword of Kaigen, and then now uh, Blood Over Bright Haven. And if you have read this one, you will know why, what I'm talking about. It is an amazing novel, right? And just like you, me, and the Nightmare Painter, I also did a full spoiler review of uh, Blood of Robert Haven on my YouTube channel. What surprised me, though, uh, from that review, and this is kind of unrelated to the content of the book, but what surprised me is that how many people are asking about the physical version of Blood of Bright Haven. So if you are watching this and you are waiting for the physical edition, it is coming. That's all I know. I think it should be within this month. M. L. Wang, as far as I know, is working on formatting the physical edition right now, and hopefully it will indeed appear on Amazon uh, this month. As for the novel itself, I will try to keep this brief, but the novel itself, it is quite short at uh, for about 400 pages long and 120,000 words long. So yeah, it is not as big as sort of Kaigen, but its impact remain immense. Siona Freinan, the main character, started off incredibly unlikable to me, and as the story progressed, seeing that she developed and her relationship with Tomil started being nurtured and emphasized, I grew to love Siona Freinan and also Tomil more and more with each passing pages. The magic system in particular will take some time for new readers to get used to, and it, it was the same for me. <laughs> it did took me some time to get used to, to the magic system, but after 25%, I think 25% of 30% of the book, I got used to the mechanism behind the magic system that felt like coding and also, well, I think you should read it and find out for yourself. I already did a review on this one. I did an explanation of how the magic system worked. Mapping and siphoning, which is basically, to put it as simply as possible, is the act of choosing a location in a map and then draw the energy from that location. M. L. Wong really signified the word dark in dark academia for blood over bright haven. It, it is an absolutely appropriate title and yeah it is amazing i think this is one of the best books of the year so far if you are a fan of the sword of kaigen this is a different kind of novel compared to the sword of kaigen but i think you will notice uh, plenty of ml wong's strength as a storyteller in the sword of kaigen in this book as well so yeah make sure to pick it up it is out now the ebook is out now and i think the physical copy will be out uh, this month. And as you can probably tell, Blood Over Bright Haven is the sixth five-star novel of the year so far uh, for me. And for the next book that I finished last month, it was for Mother of Learning, Arc 4 by Nobody103 or Domagoy Kurmaj. Yes, I finally finished reading my first web novel ever. Well, web novel being published and separated into four volumes by Redmark Kuerif, and I love this one. I think this is the best book of the entire series, and it is a very satisfying conclusion. This is the kind of novel and series where it really felt like the author has planned everything since the beginning of the first volume. So many things happen in this time loop fantasy story, and there were many iconic scenes. Uh, I think those of you who have read uh, Mother of Learning will know what I'm talking about. Uh, the one that takes place in the middle of the book, and of course, the final battles and the ending. I think it was incredibly well done. That's all I can say without giving spoilers. I will say though that just like Weibang, this is again a very heavy, uh, this is again very heavy on the battle scenes, especially the final battle. I think it was 100 or 150 pages long of battle scenes, so again, 
it can uh, the pacing can feel a bit draggy if you're not a fan of reading uh, battle scenes in your books but for me i think it worked absolutely well i love well-written battle scenes in my fantasy books and this is a great example of how it should be done when you use a lot of magics and taking into consideration everything that has been built from the first book up to the end it's so well done and it is a sign that i definitely should read uh, more web novels the, at least the popular or the highly praised ones like uh, with the Wandering Inn, Worn by Wildbow, and I think A Practical Guide to Evil, I think that's a title by Erratic Errata, and then yeah, there are more, like Lord of the Mysteries and many more. Yeah, I've been getting some recommendations on web novels to tackle, and I will try to tackle at least one each year. So, I don't know, I do not think I can find the time to actually read Worm uh, within this year because that's that's even bigger than Mother of Learning. It's as big as the entire uh, a Song of Ice and Fire so far, the five books in A Song of Ice and Fire, so I do not think I have the time for it, but rest assured that I would try to read that probably within next year. But for now, I would just say that if you haven't read Mother of Learning and you love time loop fantasy story with a great uh, magic and coming of its uh, theme, definitely pick up Mother of Learning by Nobody 103. The series is finished already and you can just read it now. Every volume, four volume in the series, all of them are consistently great. I will give each and every one of them a 4.5 out of 5 stars rating. But in, in the first place, this is a web novel, so I'm pretty much just giving one big volume or the entire series a 4.5 4 out of 5 stars rating. And the remaining two novels that I finished uh, last month, both of them are reread. And the first one is Beyond Redemption by Michael R. Fletcher. My overall thoughts re uh, regarding this book is pretty much the same as the first time I read it. It is filthy, it is dark, it's disgusting, and yet it is so compelling. It is just so hard to stop reading Beyond Redemption by Michael R. Fletcher. I think this is actually his first published fantasy novel, and I read this one for the first time in the year 2017, and ever since then, he has published like, I think, 10, 10 novels. It's a lot. And yeah, all of them are pretty dark, all the ones that I've read anyway. But I'm doing a second read of Beyond Redemption because uh, A War to End All, the third and final book in the trilogy, is finally coming out in this September. So yeah, I'm doing a second read of Beyond Redemption, which I just finished. And again, I will be doing uh, The Mirror's Truth, doing a second read of The Mirror's Truth, uh, the sequel to this one, within this month. And then I will be ready to tackle A War to End All. But this has one of the most fascinating and interesting magic system in fantasy or grim dark fantasy that I have ever read. It is so creative, sounds so simple, but it it's pretty much like something that I should have thought about something like this a long time ago, but you won't realize that until you have actually read Beyond Redemption. The Manifest Delusion series is still one of the darkest series of fantasy novels that I have ever read. It is amazing look. I do not think Beyond Redemption is as good as the sequel, The Mirror's Truth, but regardless, this is awesome. If you love Dream Dark Fantasy novel, definitely pick this one up. The story takes place in a world where fate shaped the landscape and it can defy the law of physics and pretty much everything. That's all I will say on this. I already did a full review on my Goodreads and of course on my blog, Noble Notions. I do have to give you a warning though, if you're a German reader and you are fluent in German, I think the words and terminologies inside Beyond Redemption or the entire series will totally distract you from reading it. And finally, the last novel that I finished in the month of July, it is a reread of this massive tome. It is Dark Age by Pierce Brown, the fifth novel in the Red Rising saga series and one of the darkest one of the darkest and the most brutal novel that I have ever read. It is truly dark age. It is dark. Everything about this book is bleak, dark, gory, and violent. Almost pretty much no hope. Practically no hope in this book. I will probably find that in Lightbringer, the sixth book and the penultimate volume in the Red Rising saga series that I'm going to read uh, within this month. But for Dark Age, I have mentioned this uh, plenty of times, but it is my unpopular opinion that on the first time, uh, my first time reading Dark Age, this was actually my least favorite book of the entire series. And I think that's a really unpopular opinion. But on the second read, this one received a huge upgrade in quality 
for me. And I think I always find that fascinating. Rereading is fascinating to me. It's like magic because the words inside the book remains the same, but different experience, different circumstances, and different knowledge I attained from reading this book for the first time changed my experience of reading this book for the second time. Absolutely worth it. And I think the biggest differences for me uh, compared to the first time when I read Dark Age is was it's this. I did a full reread of the entire Red Rising Saga prior to doing a second read of Dark Age now. That wasn't the case in the first book and because of that, there were plenty of moments where quite a lot of pages really where I did wonder who these characters are. Because Dark Age, the scope, the writing, everything improved in complexity. Piss Brown's prose has definitely improved and also this one features a lot of battle scenes. Many battle scenes. Dark Age definitely belongs in a military sci-fi or space opera genre. It is full with blood and death. But on this reread, although I still would have preferred that the characters that the many characters that in Dark Age to be ruminate longer so that I can feel the emotional uh, impact of them even more and even longer, but I feel like on this reread I can fully appreciate what Pierce Brown is trying to do with Dark Age more than the first time I read through it. The appearance of the new villains in Dark Age still felt a bit forced to me on my second read, but I've, again, as I said, I felt like I can appreciate them even more and this might feel like, I think this could truly be the necessary step for Prince Brown to make Lightbringer and probably Red God shine further. And I look forward to reading that as soon as I can. This is absolutely stunning, epic, and yeah, it goes again without saying that. Up to this day, Red Rising Saga is still my favorite sci-fi series of all time. And this reread of Dark Age just proved that. Very much looking forward to reading Lightbringer very soon. And if you are someone like me who felt disappointed with Dark Age on the first time uh, reading, well, probably second read will change that because I gave Dark Age on my first time read a 3.5 stars, but on the second read, I will have to give it a 4.5 stars. I don't know, I might even upgrade it to 5 stars uh, with, uh, with the passing of time, but we will see. So that's all the novels that I finished in the month of July. For manga series, I finished uh, two manga series. Well, not finished, but the first one is Mashle. Uh, this one is a Harry Potter inspired manga series, but instead of magic, the main characters is more proficient in physical power. So for this one, I've read only the first volume and it kind of gets old really quickly. I have, I have no idea whether I will still continue with this manga series or not. The reason I picked this one up in the first place is I heard that the manga series has been concluded and I thought I might as well read it to the end. But as usual, I always say when it comes to manga series, I try to give it a few volumes, like five volumes before I call it quit or continue. So I might still continue with this one. Uh, I do not want to DNF this like Fire Force if possible. But the other manga series that I finished is again a reread and this one is for Monster by Naoki Urasawa. It has been probably a decade. I don't know, it's, it's been such a long time since I read Monster for the first time. And because Philip Chase, my friend Philip Chase, invited me for a discussion of Monster uh, for the first volume and also for the entire series well, together with Murphy, so I might as well do a second read of Monster because yeah, it has been such a long time and I'm glad I did this reread. I think Monster is a manga series that gets so much better on reread, just like Dark Age that I just talked about. I remember the first time I read Monster, I felt a bit disappointed with it, not gonna lie. I kept comparing it to 20th Century Boys, which I think is superior compared to Monster. But now on this reread, maybe it's also because I'm getting older compared to the first time I read it. I read it in when I was still in the university, I think. I remember I just entered university. That's all I remembered. But yeah, uh, I think I failed to appreciate what Naoki Urasawa was trying to do with the philosophies, the morality, and the themes of Monster on my first read. I was able to feel more compelled and interested in the thrilling aspect of 20th century boys. But now on the second read, I just realized just how impactful and how heavy the themes portrayed in Monster. Sure, there were still some issues like some things might be a bit too convenient. Some encounter and events might be a bit too convenient, but overall I do not think of them as a big issue for me. I still love Monster and I consider Naoki Urasawa to be one of the best mangaka, really. Monster, uh, 20th Century Boys and Pluto. These are the three best manga series by Naoki Urasawa and I have read almost all of them. I think the only one that I have that I haven't read is Asadora, which is the newest, the newest one by Anoki Urasawa. That's the only one that I haven't read. But again, this is a great manga series. If you haven't read anything by Naoki Urasawa, you cannot go wrong with choosing either Monster, uh, 20th 
23 boys or Pluto. Love them all very much. Which one is my favorite of them three? Well, I think uh, even on the second read, I still have to choose uh, Monster to be the weakest out of the three. I still love 20th Century Boys and uh, Pluto even more. But that's pretty much the end of my July wrap up. Yeah, I finished six great novels and also many manga volumes. As far as Book of the Month goes, I will have to choose either uh, Blood Over Bright Haven or Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. For now, I think I'm going to choose slightly choose Blood Over uh, Bright Haven, but who knows? Things might change in the future with uh, the passing of time. Sometimes there are books, after a while you just think of them better. And that notion might happen to Yumi and the Nightmare Painter as well. Because I do, well, it, it's hard for me to forget about Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. It is a story that matters a lot to me and I loved it very much. So yeah, you know what? Just I'm just going to choose the two of them, okay? Blood Over Bright Haven and also Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. These are my two best books of the month. So that's pretty much it. That's the end of my July wrap up video. Do let me know what you think about my July wrap up and please tell me how many books you finished last month and which one was your favorite book of the month. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.